um, run across the field and take a right as they go past the woods and through that trail you'll see in a minute. And they're off. I want to say this is Nick Brown taking the lead. Norton and Hopkinton close behind Nick in a pack. They're going to head into the woods here, so we'll lose them in just a second. And there they go. So this course is a new course for Hopkinton. In past years, the cross country teams, both boys and girls, raced at the state park. Um, and that course was a little different, a lot more pavement um, and hillier than this course. But one thing that's really challenging, I think, for the runners today will be the course because it's new and because it's shorter. Um, it's a little shorter than what they're used to, just below three miles at 2.9. Um, and these runners typically will run 5K for their races. Uh, the first mile is also slightly downhill, so they'll be coming uphill for the second and third miles. Um, but it's more of a false flat, so it's hard to even notice when you're going out that it is indeed downhill. And so I think a lot of people might go out too fast in the excitement of the race. Um, and then later... Oh. I'm being told they're about to start the second wave. And they're off. This is the second wave of runners. And usually in cross country, everyone would start together. But because of COVID this year, the start is staggered. And so they'll go off in smaller groups. As you can see, everyone's wearing masks. Uh, but I think they'll be allowed to take those off as they start to separate. So if they're not near anyone else, they'll... I think be able to take them off. Strong start for this pack as well. And it looks like there's a third pack and that'll be our final wave for the boys. Right now, they're running down Center Trail. So there's another trail um, right off of Center Trail that is in the woods here, and they'll connect to the larger trail. They'll run down the hill, down Center Trail, to the Wellsel Trail, um, and that'll have them turn around. They'll come back up Center Trail and do a lap on the loop road, run around Field 13, and come back towards the football field. And the third wave of boys has gone off. It seems like there actually may be a fourth wave. A lot of people coming out to run today. The weather today, obviously a little bit wet, 
and on the colder side. But if I were running, this is the kind of weather I'd want to run in. Um, it's a lot better than running in the heat at least and not the greatest for spectators, but I think the temperature is probably ideal for cross country. Um, the one challenge of running in the rain might be the mud, um, especially center trail might be slippery. It's more of a sand, packed sand, I don't really know, um, but that can be tough to run on. Oh, sorry. And the third wave of boys is just reaching the woods now. They'll head off onto Center Trail as well. The fourth wave has just gone off. They're headed across the field now. There they go, Norton taking the lead. A strong start for Hawkington and Norton both. After the fourth wave disappears into the woods, I don't think we'll be seeing anyone again for a little bit, but they will finish up here on the football field. So once they finish their loop around field 13, which is just off the loop road, they'll head back this way um, and run up that trail that the fourth wave of boys is just now on. Uh, they'll come up and across the JV football field and run down the hill to run across the varsity football field for the finish. And there goes the fourth wave of boys just reaching the trail now. So that's everyone. How long is the course? How long would it take them to run? It's 2.9 miles. So I'm thinking we'll probably start seeing people soon. It'll take 15 to 16 minutes for that front pack, most likely, to complete the course. Oh, and we'll take a break now. <laughs> okay, through the race, which is very impressive. They've run about two and a half miles between the last time we saw this group and where we're seeing them now. So they've done their loop around field 13 and they're coming back seems that the front runner has a pretty big lead and there's a pack following him with it seems four runners and a fifth right off the back so they'll come up this trail along the side we're going to see them on the jv football field as they come out of the trail i think we should be seeing them any moment now oh there he is Coming up a slight hill, he'll make a left. So that's Nick and he'll be taking the diagonal as best he can to make a straight line across this field. Try and make the distance as short as it can be. And he's looking back over his shoulder but it doesn't seem anybody else has gotten to the field yet. 
So once he gets to the end of the field, he'll run through those two cones on either side of the gate and take a left down towards the track. We're seeing just now the next runners reach the field. Close battle for second, it seems. We've got Hawkington taking one, two, three, and four so far, and Norton in fifth and sixth. In order to win a cross country meet, you have to score actually the smaller number of points. And if you take one, two, and three, that's an automatic win. There's no way another team can come back from that. So one, two, and three, if we can maintain them, we'll win the meet. All right, and here comes Nick down the final stretch. They'll finish at the end of the football field. You can actually see this line of cones down the center, which is kind of unusual. Um, they'll be finishing one team on either side of the line. So Hopkinton will be on the line closest to us and Norton will be on the side farthest away. And there's Nick taking the win for Hopkinton. And here come two, three, and four, also from Hopkinton. Seems And Hawking takes second as well. Here come three and four, almost to the line. And then there's Norton taking five and six, it seems. Oh, and it's a close race. Close race for eighth. Let's see who's gonna take it. I think it's gonna be Norton. And I think that was Norton. All right, it seems like we have a little bit of time before we'll see our 10th runner. Oh, there's Norton, our 10th runner coming in right now. He's on the final stretch. And this will be Norton's final scoring runner. So the first five people from either team will have their place count as their score. And then those places are added up to get the total score for the meet. We have another Norton runner followed by three Hawkington close together. A lot of people are starting to come in now. Right, and then they have this nice downhill on the pavement, um, which actually is kind of tough if you're wearing spikes. I'm thinking most of them are not because they'll have run a good portion on Loop Road, which is also paved. So for this race, people are gonna have to be taking their spikes out of their shoes, which makes it pretty slippery, I think, if you're running on wet grass. <laughs> Hopefully we won't see anyone slip today. I have definitely done that before. It's not good. Oh, and two runners from Hopkinton battling it out. Kicking it into the finish. Norton also kicking it in strong. And we've got another Norton runner, Hawkington just crossing the line. Another Norton runner. 
Here comes another runner from Hopkinton. Oh, there we go. I think those are pumpkins on either end of the finish line. Very festive. We're so close to Halloween. So I think that should be most everyone from the first wave. We're likely seeing the second wave right now. So I think typically if everyone had started at the same time, you would be seeing a whole bunch of runners crossing around the same time right about now. But with a staggered start, everyone's going to be much more spread out, which is a good thing in terms of taking health precautions. But I think it might be challenging for some runners who are used to running with a big pack, having to pace by themselves. It's really going to be a test of who knows their pace, who can really push themselves even with no one else around them. And then with the waves having gone off at different times, the appropriate amount of time will be subtracted from each person's time. So there's always a possibility that someone from wave three could finish behind someone from wave two, having run the course in a shorter amount of time. So it'll be hard to know the results for some of the people starting in the later waves until everything is totaled up afterward. We'll have to see if any of these runners are running PRs today. It's a relatively new course, so they haven't had a lot of time to race. I think they've had one race so far on this course, if I'm correct. And that was in much nicer weather. Uh, kind of perfect weather last Saturday. Oh, right. Um, and I've forgotten to mention so far, but it's actually senior night. This is our final meet at the home course in Hopkinton. So today, all of the seniors on both teams will be recognized. I think there are balloons and posters, possibly flowers. Recognize all the seniors who have spent four years in this sport. It's definitely a tough time to be in your senior year, as I know the season isn't quite what everyone expected, but it's great that everybody's still able to get out here and race. Last year's senior class, I know, was a big one for the boys. They've graduated a lot of runners, and so this year represents like a big opportunity for some of the younger runners to step up. Um, in leadership roles and as runners in a way they haven't necessarily before. I think they lost a good amount of runners who did actually go on to run in college. So those runners will be running their first year at the collegiate level while a lot of their younger teammates will be stepping up. And here we go. Two more runners coming in. Got another runner from Norton. All right, we have another net runner from Norton coming in, I think. This meet is one that in a typical season probably 
wouldn't happen because Norton's actually a smaller school in the TVL and Hoppington is larger. And so in a typical cross country season, you'll have dual meets between large schools and dual meets between small schools. And the only time that these teams would normally see each other would be at larger invitationals on the weekends and at the TVL showcase race at the end of the season. Um, this year, the division is actually geographic. And so Norton falls within the same geographic location as Hawkington. I think it's divided between east and west. I could be wrong about that. Um, but it's an opportunity for teams to see each other normally wouldn't during the regular season. Another runner from Norton about to pass his teammate. Nope, nope, his teammate <laughs> got it right at the line. Got another runner from Hop Union coming in. Norton just now crossing the line. All of the work that these boys have been putting in over the past six, seven, eight months is really starting to show. Um, the indoor track season was cut short right at the very end. And obviously outdoor track did not happen in the spring. So these boys have been training on their own throughout the spring and summer, um, many without their teammates. And I think it's been really tough to sustain the same level of training that they normally would put in given school cancellations and all the uncertainty, but everybody seems is doing really well having put in a lot of work over the summer. So it's finally an opportunity for them to race after missing their spring seasons. We've got another rudder from Hopkinton coming in. It's approaching the line now. Another rudder from Hopkinton following him. We've got a third Hopkinton runner just reaching the field now. All right, and I think that may be it for the boys. We're trying to see if there's anybody else out on the course. We think that may be everyone. Oh, here's another runner, right here.
All right, and Aiden just took the left onto the pavement. He's headed down towards the track. Or we can see a lot of his teammates cheering. It seems there's a few extra people who have joined the course marshal. We actually have them stationed throughout the course. So over on Center Trail and down on Loop Road, just to let runners know where the course is, where the course is and where they need to make turns. Very helpful, especially for the visiting team uh, because it's pretty easy in cross country, I think, to lose track of where you are and make some wrong turns. I know I've done that before. Got a runner from Hockenden coming in now. Strong kick to the finish. And he's over the line. I think that concludes our broadcast of the boys race. Be back soon with the girls race. <laughs> Oh, 